So a couple things we want to hit today from this first section in your textbook. The first is how whenever we make a measurement, we always want to make sure that we have estimated that last digit. So here I've got examples of two different measuring devices. The first measuring device that you see on this side only has um, the centimeters, this is what, I, what we're using today is centimeters, it only has centimeters marked off for each centimeter that's there. So the length of the particular, this bar that I have underneath, I know that it's between the three and the four, but there's no marks there for me to tell exactly how far it is. So what I want to do is I want to estimate that last number. Notice that I've always put the the edge of what I'm measuring next to the one because you never know if the end of your ruler has gotten dinged up. If it has, it's not gonna measure it accurately. So you always start at the one. So what that means is that I have two centimeters and it's a little bit further. So I'm just gonna to have to kind of guesstimate about how far it is. And I'm gonna guesstimate that it looks, maybe it's about 2.2 or 2.3 centimeters. Um, so when I write it, I'm going to write it as 2.3 centimeters. So this digit here is the one that's got some uncertainty in it. I'm not sure if it, it might be a 2, it might be a 3. Um, but that last uncertain digit, we might read it differently. You might read it as a, as a 2, and I might read it as a 3. And so that's why you want to make sure that you record that. I think we can both pretty readily agree that it's 2 centimeters. It's this last one that's estimated. Now, on the other hand, if you look at this over here, again, I've put the edge of the thing that I want to measure at the one centimeter mark because I don't know what the end of my ruler looks like. It may have gotten dinged up or chopped off uh, too early. And so I, don't, I'm, I can't be for sure that that first centimeter is a full centimeter. So I put it at the one mark. But this ruler is marked off in tenths of a centimeter. So now when I look at the end, it's pretty easy for me to tell that I'm in between the 0.1 and the 0.2 mark, but the last digit then is what I'm gonna estimate on this one. So again, I, since I started at one, I've got one, two centimeters. I know that it's between the first and the second mark, so it's 2.1, and then that last digit, I have to estimate it. And so it looks to me like maybe it's about six. Again, you might read that last mark as 2.15, you might read it as 2.17, and so if there are you know, three or four of us and we're all measuring the same thing, that last digit might be different between us, and that's okay. That's the one that has uncertainty, but that's why you wanna make sure you include that one, um, because otherwise it, this, it looks like this is the one that you estimated. So I'm gonna write my measurement so that I have the estimated digit, and you always wanna make sure that you include the unit with any measurement that you write down. If you don't include the unit, I don't know what you're measuring in. Are you measuring in centimeters? Are you measuring in miles? Are you measuring in kilometers? Are you, are you measuring quarts or gallons or liters? You can't tell if you don't put the unit on there, so you wanna make sure that you always put the unit on your measurement. The second thing we wanna talk about today is significant figures. Some of you may have hit this in an algebra class, uh, some of you may have not, but I want to make sure you understand the rules because it's really, really important um, to be able to tell what figures are significant and which ones aren't. Because as we just pointed out, that last digit is always the estimated digit, and so you want to make sure that you're accurately portraying which digits are significant. So the first rule is that any non-zero number is significant. So in this first example that I have here, 2360, the two, the three, and the six are all significant. The, the second rule is that if you have um, a zero between significant figures, it is significant. And the third rule is that if you have zeros at the end of the number and to the right of the decimal point, they are significant. So I'm gonna demonstrate all those rules for you as we go through these examples. Now, in this particular example, the decimal point is right here. So, is this zero significant or is it not? Well, it's not between two other significant figures, so that rule doesn't help me. 
The third rule says it has to be to the right of the decimal point and at the end of the number. Well, it is at the end of the number, but it's not to the right of the decimal point. So in this particular number, only three of these are significant. That has three significant figures in it. Let's look at this one. Again, if you have a non-zero digit, they are significant. So the two, the three, and the six are again significant. In this number, the zero is between the three and the six. It's between two digits, digits that are significant. So this is significant also. So in this number, 2,306, there are four significant figures because the zero is between two numbers that are significant. Let's look at the next one down here. Again, the two, the three, and the six are significant. This zero is not between two significant figures, but the third rule says if it's to the right of the decimal point, which it is, and it's at the end of the number, which this one also is, then this one is significant. So 2.360 has four significant figures to it. Number 20. Now, both of these are the number 20, but they're written very, very differently. So how do I tell how many significant figures I have here? Well, the two is significant um, because it's non-zero. If I look at this zero, it fulfills the, the third rule. It is to the right of the decimal point and it is at the end of the number. So this zero is significant because it fulfills both of those criteria. These two zeros are between two digits that are significant. So both of these are significant as well. So this number has four significant figures. Finally, let's look at this one, the number 20 with the decimal point at the end of it. But this time I don't have any zeros after the decimal point. So the two is significant because it is non-zero. This zero is not to the right of the decimal point. And it's, although it's at the end of the number, it's not to the right of the decimal point. So this zero is not significant. So therefore, only this one, only the two is significant. So this number just has one significant figure. You will have some um, examples to do in your homework. So hopefully that will help you figure out um, and understand significant figures. If you don't, again, please make sure that you ask me if you have any questions on that. One other thing that I want to show you today, um, if you took biology last year, you know that biology has an incredible amount of vocabulary words to it. Chemistry has some, but it doesn't have near the amount of vocabulary words that biology did. But I want to show you um, one method for learning vocabulary words um, in case you have trouble, that's something that you have trouble learning. So what you can do is you can take um, two index cards or two pieces of paper if you don't have index cards. On one card, you're gonna write the word on one side, the vocabulary word on one side, and then you're gonna write the definition on the back side of that. So here I've got matter and anything that has mass and takes up space written on the back of the card, okay? On a second card, I wrote the word matter on the front, but nothing on the back. Okay, so I have two cards that both say matter on the front. One of them has a definition on the back, the other one does not. Then when you go through and you study your cards, what you can do is you can take all of your cards that have definitions on the back, if I can find the right ones here, and you can line them all up on the table so that all your definitions are facing up like this. Then you can take the cards that only have the, the words on them and you can match them up. So which one of these is the definition for matter? Well, it's, it's not either one of these first two. It's anything that has mass and takes up space. So I could lay this card next to this one and I can match my other two as well until I think I have them right. Then, when I think I have all of them matched up correctly, I can take this one and turn it over, and if it's right, the words on the front will both match. So this is one method that one of my own kids invented for um, learning her vocabulary words, and it was very, very effective for her. Um, if it's, that's not something that you need, you don't have to use that, just a 
uh, suggestion that I had in case you did have trouble learning vocabulary words and you needed a technique to use.